all you wizardy people out there. It's me, Mooner. Um, so this is a, um, this is you know classic bullshit tier list. Uh, I just wanted to talk about week two of, um, you know the meta that we're going into in week two of. Uh, road, uh, I'm sorry, um, <clears throat> ProQuest season after Dromai is gone and how that might affect Kano and where he stands in the meta right now. And I just want to talk about the meta in general. And I'm just like, you know, uh, so last weekend I did play two road, or er, I'm sorry, so stupid. I did play two uh, ProQuests and um, the first one, I was literally on like two hours sleep and i o2 dropped i just like i was a little bit late um and lost my first match that way and then just lost my second match i I don't even i honestly don't even remember what i played i just lost it and just dropped uh in fact it might have been um a buy and i just left anyways Uh, i I just didn't want to play that day Uh, but i did get a lot of sleep and was super ready for sunday and I went out to Portal Games in Bethlehem, PA, and played uh, that uh, Pro Quest. And I did take Kano, obviously. And um, I lost in top four to Levia, which is actually a pretty bad matchup. But I I was able to. She Levia played a Beast Within. Or I mean, played a Bloodbrush Bellows, and only had a Beast Within in hand and discarded it. And I. Use that opportunity to combo off. I got him all the way down to one, and this was like after eight rounds of CC. I didn't realize, I didn't even think of the Beast Within trigger killing him, but I conceded. I was, I got him all the way down to one. I was like, "Oh fuck, you got me!" and threw the hand out. And he was like, "Oh, okay." And then I was like, "Oh, don't you die to Beast Within?" I was like, "Ah, oh, fuck it, yeah, I already conceded." So that's sad, but I would have had to play Dromai in the finals and. Um, it's all good. Um, I, I got some pro quests coming up this weekend, and I will be ready for them because Dromai is gone. So how does that affect us in this meta? Dromai being LL, that's a big deal. That's big news. Um, Dromai illusionists in general are are definitely gatekeepers of the meta. They definitely um, hold a lot of decks back, and I want to talk about that and how that might affect Kano. And you know, I honestly think, uh, spoiler alert, Kano is in an exceptionally good spot. I think he is at the top of the meta. For anybody who knows how to play Kano well, you are going to have a really good time. Uh, because a lot of the decks that have now been uplifted, shall we say, or uh, set free by Dromai hitting the old dusty trail. Um, this is an interesting meta. So this is only going to last through ProQuest season. And then uh, there might be a calling or a battle harden or something sp- sprinkled in there. But then in a month and a half, we have um, Part the Mistail coming out. And so that's going to shake things up all, all kinds of uh, ways with a new ninja, a new illusionist, and uh, a new assassin. And traditionally, uh, ninjas prey on Dromai, but we'll see how you know this kitty cat ninja Zen is going to do. And then we have a new um, assassin who traditionally is held down by illusionists. And it seems like this one is a little bit more balanced. Uh, this illusionist, shall I say, Enigma, is a little more balanced and not as um, po- polarizing, I guess is the best word. But anyways, let's talk about this meta right now and where where we sit. I'm sorry, I'm rambling on a lot. But I want to talk about the heroes that are going to be uplifted a lot. Uh, I just have this labeled as S-A-B-C and Living Legend. Uh, but we are going to just like kind of break it down into heroes that... Um, actually, let's just change this into uh, meta. So these are going to be the meta heroes. Um, and let's just go over those first. So starting with our boy Kano, I think he is meta. I think he is one of the best decks in the format. And with Dromai leaving, he only gets better. Uh, if you know how to play Kano and you know how to play him well, you're going to have a really good time. Because some of the other meta decks, uh, we are exceptionally or extremely favored into. Like Victor. Victor is almost almost as close as it gets to a buy. 
um, besides some of the low tier decks. But in the high tier uh, meta play decks, uh, depending on your region, I have a lot of Victor in mind. I live in the uh, Northeast, uh, Pennsylvania, Jersey area. And there is a lot of Victor love, a lot of Guardian love around here. And Kano just has a really good time. Uh, if, if you can't beat Victor in first cycle, you can just pitch stack and block out and just beat him in second cycle. It's just one of the easiest matchups ever. Um, but I also do think that we do have a problem with Prism coming up. Now, I will caveat this by saying Prism is an exceptionally hard deck to play and a very difficult deck to play against. Um, the best way to beat Prism, honestly, is to just block her out and just try to fatigue her. She only has so many Heralds, and she only has, you know, so many things that she can do. Uh, there's only, you know, she's only running like five to six, seven Figments. Um, you can generally just block her out and fatigue her. So I've heard. I don't think the matchup is good for Kano in any way, but I think she is held down a lot, and I think she is a, an exceptionally high-skilled deck to play in fact there was a couple there were two prisms at uh, portal and they did not do well at all they got pretty much trounced on by guardian and uh, warrior so allegedly those are some two pretty bad matchups for prism but I do expect her to show up now because a lot of these illusionist players are just like you know, blue no matter who, uh, illusionist no matter who. So I expect a lot of them to jump over to Prism for week two of ProQuest season. Uh, let's talk about somebody else who gets a little bit better. Um, Azalea. I think Azalea is meta. She's not played as much. I don't know why, but she has maybe maybe she doesn't have the greatest matchup into Guardians. But she has a really good matchup spread into everybody else. Anybody who puts the time in to learn Azalea and know Azalea, I mean, she just won a calling. She just won Battle Harden. She just top saved everything. Anybody who's really good with Azalea and has been play playing her for a long time is going to have a good time. Um, I do think that matchup is slightly in Kano's favor. AB2, uh, maybe a little Svel Void, but generally just AB2. And uh, if you go first, and can just establish some potions and get some uh, combo pieces in Arsenal. Uh, you can just like whittle her, whittle her down with like Swell Tidings and uh, Red Voltic Bolts and you know uh, Sonic Booms and things like that and get her into kill range very, fairly quickly. It is going to be a two or three turn game no matter what. You are either going to die or you are either going to win. But I think a really strong Kano pilot is favored into Azalea. Um, also, we have, I think all the Warriors get better with Dromai leaving. So, we have Kasai, who has won uh, a calling and has proven herself. But I definitely think she was gatekept by Dromai. I, you know, I'm not sure about that calling uh, specifically, but she couldn't have played that many Dromais because that's a really tough matchup for her. So, I think that she is now a meta tier deck along with Axe's Dory. Uh, in fact, I just put up a video, uh, Kano gameplay into Axe's Dory. I think we are extremely, extremely favored into that matchup. Uh, you either, that's, that's either, you have your choice. You can either kill them in first cycle, uh, if they're running low AB, or if they're running high AB, you just block them out, pitch stack, and set up a, a combo that they cannot beat, um, generally, generally they're either running between 1 and 3 AB, and, uh, any... Kano player who's worth his weight in gold can play around that pretty easily. Uh, hatchets can do a lot of damage, but I mean, so does our combo, and I think that's a very favored matchup for us. Um, let's put some, let's let's balance this out a little bit with some people who I think definitely get worse with Dromai leaving, and that's the ninjas. Fi is all but a dead deck. Um, he, he's in the he's in the waiting the waiting room for some good uh, expansion slot cards. Other than that, um, you know he just doesn't do that well, and he doesn't do what Katsu can do. But I think Katsu uh, moves down a little bit. I think he moves from an A 
or S tier deck down to a B tier deck without having Dromai to prey upon and having so much Warrior and Guardian in the meta right now, uh, as well as Kano. Uh, that's a 50-50 matchup if you want my opinion. Um, he can prey on Kano a little bit, uh, uh, us starting at such a low life total, but um, I don't think that Katsu gets better at all with Dromai leaving. Um, but I do think that Bolton gets better with Dromai leaving. That was one of Bolton's worst matchups, and uh, I don't know if I would call him a meta deck. Uh, he can struggle into Azalea, he can struggle into the uh, Guardians, but I think that he definitely gets better. Um, and really good, really good Bolton players are really scary. Uh, they do have access to, you know, that, um, that pseudo spell void and um they run you know that crown that has spell void and they run a b so you you usually they're only running like one a b and like spell void four so you can get them into uh, a very precarious life total pretty easily um and then sometimes you can kill them even without using storm striders i've done it um it's actually pretty easy you just just keep whittling them down with big damage spells and uh, eventually you get them down to like sub 15 health and you can send over a, wait till they drop their hand and send over, you know, just 15 damage pretty easily. It's not that hard. Um, even if they do spell void four of it, it's, you can get it, th you can get through. It's pretty easy. Uh, it, you might want to practice that matchup a few times, but uh, I think Kano is favored into Bolton uh, personally. Uh, Bravo. I'm going to put Bravo down in the maybe low B tier, high C tier. Like, why would you play Bravo when you could just play Victor? Uh, and Victor does it better. Uh, although Victor doesn't have access to on-demand dominate, um, you know, he is really good into the higher meta decks. Um, he, you know, Bl Trounce and the Golden Sun and just being able to draw cards off of Clash and, and you know... The wager mechanic, uh, it's just really strong. Um, thankfully for us, though, it's one of our best matchups. But Victor is pretty much a, a thorn in the side of everybody else at the top of the meta right now. Um, I think that the both of them assassins get a lot better with Dromai leaving. Um, I've played against some really good uh, Arachne decks. Um, them being able to just really disrupt our pitch stack is kind of a thing, but generally they shouldn't pose much of a threat to Kano. Uh, same thing with Azuri. Azuri can't beat Kano to save her life, so that's why she's not in the meta right now. I think she definitely, definitely uh, gets better because her absolute worst matchup was Dromai, and uh, she can prey upon the meta decks, but she can't beat Kano to save her life, so that's why I'm not putting her up into the meta tier. Although I do think she is high in the A tier. Um, she might struggle a little bit into Prism, so you might want to put Prism a little bit ahead of her. But everybody else, you know, Codex is a real thing. She can run um, some traps, uh, and or, you know, she can definitely, you know, if she gets to do her game plan and she gets to do what she wants and is not disrupted. Um, she's going to have a good time. Uh, Dash IO. Uh, I think Dash IO gets better, but I still think she's a fringe deck. Uh, but I, one of them made it into top eight of the pro quest I, I played, and it was a very interesting build. I don't think enough people are putting the time into trying to figure Dash IO out, but I do think she is a really good deck. Um, I've seen like several different builds of her, and some of them just are, you know, it's that balance of like how many items and how many attacks and do you run Tome of Fendal, do you not, do you blah, blah, blah. Uh, the best Dash IO decks aren't running Tome of Fendal. Uh, they're not even running Boon Grenades. They're just straight out aggroing you and just destroying you with uh, shields, just throwing up ward shields and things like that. And that can be a problem for Kano. But I was able to play against a Dash IO in Swiss. It, we, we were at the top tables. I think this was around like five or six. And uh, I handily beat her 
even though she was able to throw up a lot of those shields um, that have ward on them and things like that. Uh, it's just you can respond to her playing that off the top and before it resolves you can actually kill her. It's pretty easy. Um, let's talk about OG Dash. Uh, I think OG Dash is a fringe deck right now. Um, I think she's got too many different ways to build her, honestly. Like, honestly, like, there's like 17 different ways you can play Dash uh, Inventor Extraordinaire, i.e. And um, some of them are really good into some metas, some of them are really bad into some metas. And I think she just kind of gets out aggroed right now by the top of the meta. Um, unless you play her hyper defensively, um, and, and she is really good into Kano. Kano does have a tough time into uh, OG Dash. But I think that she just really struggles into Azalea. She struggles into uh, the Warriors. She struggles into the Guardians a little bit. Unless you're playing her like Turtle Dash hyper defensively. And then you want to see the Guardians. But you don't want to see the Warriors. Uh, I don't know. Um, you can just, if, if you're a Warrior, you can just bring in Great Axe. And just give her a really bad time. Um, but I, I think that... I don't think she gets any better with Dromai leaving. Uh, I do think that that was a tough matchup for her, but I think the top of the meta right now is also pretty rough for OG Dash. Um, speaking of, let's go and... I think that... Uh, I don't have a D tier on this because I just... It, it's, it's silly. Who needs a D tier? Uh, but uh, I do think that... Um, Teclavasen gets a little better uh i might put him at the bottom of b tier he's a fringe deck but he does get a little better with dromai leaving dromai was a really bad matchup but kano is an absolute auto loss not having access to any arcane barrier and being able to respond to him uh activating his suit by just killing him you can kill him from 40 uh you can not take a single point of damage that entire game and that is just such a bad matchup for um, Teklovasen, uh, that he might be good into the top of the meta, but if he runs into a Kano at all, he's just gonna cry. Uh, but I do think he gets a lot better with Dromai leaving. Um, he's good into the Warriors, he's good into the Guardians, uh, he's good into Katsu. Um, he has a lot of really good matchups, so uh, I don't think he's been figured out either. Uh, so it's just kind of like he, he just kind of sits in the middle of the road for me right now uh, If you sit across a Tekla of Austin um, You better expect th that that they sorry but that they know what they are doing and this might be the time we see Tekla of Austin actually uh, do, do, do some good and cement himself in possibly the a B a or top of B tier But I think he gets uh, a lot better with drama leaving that was an auto loss matchup for him um, and then to round out the top of our meta, uh, I'm going to put the rest of the brutes here real quick. We have, I don't have a lot of representation in my local area with, um, with brute except in, in my actual locals, but like regionally, there's not a lot of, of KO running around, but KO is definitely a meta deck. Um, he doesn't get better or worse with Icelander, or I'm sorry, with Dromai leaving. Oh, poor Icelander, I miss her so much. But he definitely uh, still is at the top of the meta right now. And I know the meta, uh, I wouldn't consider these all to be S tier decks. I would just consider these all to be meta decks right now. Um, also, uh, I, I'm i gonna say it, that Leviah is the best brute. She is definitely the best brute right now. But she has some issues. I just realized that Reinar is... Oh, yeah, that's Reinar. Duh. Holy shit, I'm dumb. Um, I don't see any reason to play Reinar over KO. There's KO. That was Reinar. Um, I don't know. Maybe put him in the bottom of the B tier. But I, he's like Phi. I don't see any reason to be playing him unless you're just a Reinar specialist and you really know what you're doing. In that case, I would put him into either A or... B tier. Uh, he's got a really good prism matchup, but he kind of. Um, I, I think he's the worst of the brutes right now. I do think Leviah is the best of the brutes, 
So I'm gonna go ahead and put her up here at the top of A tier. Um, I just think that she isn't as represented as Ko. Ko is just played a ton more, but and and Leviah is a much 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 harder deck to play, uh, much harder deck to play well and play into the field. But I think she has exceptional matchups into almost all of the meta decks. She's just not as represented, so that's why I have her at the bottom of a, or at the top of A tier. Um, let's talk about Riptide. I actually lost to a Riptide. I misplayed, but it was my only loss in Swiss. Um, and I think Riptide is in a really, really good spot right now. And you can flame me in the comments if you want to, but he is so good into all of these Brutes and Warriors uh, and, gar and Guardians. It's not even funny. Um, maybe not so much the Guardians. Like, he does lose clashes against Victor, but like... The rest of these heroes, like Azalea, does not want to see Riptide. Kasai, Dorinthia, they don't want to see Riptide. Um, none of these top decks want to see Riptide. Uh, e even Az uh, Azuri, she doesn't want to see Riptide. And a really good Riptide player can like crush through a lot of these decks. He is going to auto loss, generally, usually, um, to Kano. Unless the Kano player is an idiot and misplays, like myself, uh, or you know, not to give anything, not to take anything away from the Riptide player, he played absolutely stellar. But uh, I just just miscounted my resources on my combo turn, and uh, but but he did out aggro me. I mean, he got me down to such a low life total that I had to combo off, and I just didn't have enough damage to kill him uh, and lost to him. Um, you know. There's a couple different builds of Riptide running around right now. Ones that are heavy on the traps and ones that are heavy on the aggro. I think somewhere in between is where he is best. Um, he does have a traditionally bad Kano matchup, uh, but I think he's really good into some of these top decks. So I think that you're going to see, if you see a really good Riptide player and you're sitting down from him and you're playing one of these Warriors or uh, anything like that, I think that you should definitely you know take caution and expect a good game um betsy why would you play betsy i i don't know max why would you play max i genuinely don't know olympia why would you play olympia i, I genuinely don't know why you would play olympia over any of these other warriors these are these are decks that are sitting in the uh expansion slot waiting room uh they need some help they need some help real bad um i do think that um, Vincent gets better with Dromai leaving, um, but I think she needs a lot of help still. And then there's good old Viscerai. You either have the OTK Viscerai or you've got just the aggro Viscerai. Either way, he's more of a fringe deck, so we're going to place him down here in B tier. Not a lot of people are playing or have their eye on Viscerai, but the people who do play Viscerai, they're diehard Viscerai players, and uh, you should. If you sit down from a Viscerai, chances are, if it's a sideboarding thing, if you don't sideboard correctly, you're going to lose. Um, and I would be afraid if you sit down next to a Viscerai at a ProQuest because they probably know what they're doing. But these are all the, like, the fringe decks. So uh, a, the S tier is meta. Um, a tier is just like all the decks that I think get a, a lot better with Draw My Leaving or are some of the best decks in the format. Uh, they just might not be as represented. B is going to be the fringe decks, who I think can definitely put up some results. And uh, I can't see putting Teclo that high. Um, but they all definitely get better with Draw My Leaving. And then finally we have uh, the the C tier, which is just like, why play? Why play me? I don't know. Okay, so we just, uh, all, you know, just clarified some things. So, anyways, uh, check out my gameplay vids. I've got some Kano gameplay vids going up. I'm sorry I haven't been posting a lot. I've just been exceptionally busy. Please flame me in the comments. Let me know what you think. But I think that Kano is at the top of the meta right now. I think he is one of the best decks, especially with Dromai leaving. You just got to watch out for some of these A-tier decks. Uh, they can give you a problem. 
but I think that he is uh, has some 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 of the best matchups and one of the best matchup spreads in this uh, volatile little meta that we are sitting in before uh, part the misfail drops. Uh, just watch out for Prism, and um, hopefully I will try to put some. I I do have some Prism gameplay uh, videos. Uh, backlogged. I'll try to post some of those so that you can see how I've approached that matchup. Um, but you kind of got to get lucky and uh, just let the rest of the meta and great decks just kind of filter her out. That's pretty much your um, your best bet. But all right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, like I said, flame me in the comments for any of my selections uh, or choices or uh, whatever the fuck this shit is. Anyways, peace out, wizards.